Hello, welcome back to Anatomy Lab. And today we're just going to run through the structures of the urogenital system, specifically from a female cat specimen. And one of the most important structures there is in the urogenital system would be the, these uh, bean-shaped organs located on the back side of the abdominal cavity. This one is the left kidney. And as I said, they're located on the back side, a like dorsal abdominal body wall. And unlike the other visceral organs located in the abdominal cavity, which are suspended by mesenteries, and they're dangling into the uh, abdominal cavity, the space, the kidneys are actually not suspended inside the abdominal cavity, rather they're located dorsal or at the back side of the cavity. They're kind of kind of like pasted on the dorsal body wall covered by the parietal peritoneum. And this this position has a term for it. It's called retroperitoneum. And in order to dissect more closely the, the kidney, you have to extract it from its retroperitoneal position. Right, so that's, that's a kidney and its major function is for controlling the levels of water and solutes inside your body, body fluids, in short, for osmoregulation. And it also has an important excretory function, excreting uh, wastes, metabolic byproducts like uh, urea. And it does so by producing a substance called urine containing all the wastes and uh, excess water and solutes and it flushes out that urine into this duct the kidney duct is called the ureter so here's the ureter this white tube here is the ureter and it goes posteriorly and if you follow it it will drain that urine into this pouch and this is the urinary bladder okay. and then from the urinary bla bladder where the urine can be temporarily stored urine will now flow into this uh, urethra and then from the urethra down into the common urogenital sinus out into the urogenital opening the, the urinary, urinary bladder has portions and this free anterior border that is not fixed, it's movable. It's called the apex of the urinary bladder. And this one that is relatively immobile next to the urethra is called the fundus of the urinary bladder. And the urinary bladder is suspended by mesenteries, as you can see. This one that suspends it from the ventral body wall is called the median umbilical ligament. And the other two mesenteries suspending the urinary bladder are the left and right lateral umbilical ligaments that are often impregnated with fat. So this one is... one of the lateral umbilical ligaments filled with fat. The other lateral umbilical ligament was uh, removed for dissection of uh, urogenital system on this side. Okay, so let's start with the kidneys first. There are some deeper structures that we need to identify. Okay, so here's the left kidney. And as I said, you have to extract it from its retroperitoneal position. And then what you're gonna do is you have to make a frontal section of the kidney substance in order to see its internal anatomy. Okay. And by the way, the, this concave region where the ureter penetrates the kidney substance is called the renal hilus. And uh, when you perform 
the frontal section, you'll see that this structure here is just the uh, continuation, the proximal portion of the ureter. Okay, and that, and it's funnel shape, as you can see, it's expanded. And so it's co also called as the renal pelvis, that expanded proximal portion of the ureter inside the renal sinus. So this cavity inside is the renal sinus. And this one, the expanded portion of the ureter is the renal pelvis. Right, so let's, let's examine the kidney substance itself. The outer layer, outermost layer of the kidney is called the renal cortex. And that's where you find the renal corpuscles that first filter the blood of water and solutes and other uh, substances like wastes. And then the inner layer of the kidney is called the medulla. In the medulla, you'll see this white layer here. That if you look very closely, you have a streaky appearance made up of white lines. I don't know if you can see from this resolution, but anyway, that white layer there is the region of the medulla containing the collecting tubules or collecting ducts where urine is ultimately collected and then drained into the renal pelvis. So if we're going to trace the path of urine, blood is first filtered from the renal corpuscles located in the renal cortex. And then from there, the nephron, which is the filtration unit of the kidneys, will further refine the concentration of the final urine. And then once uh, reabsorbed na yung mga kailangang substances and na excrete out na lahat ng mga hindi na kailangan substances like toxins and wastes sa urine, then that urine will flow and will be collected by the collecting tubules inside the medulla, this white portion here. And then you see that it's not obvious in our specimen, but those collecting tubules terminate at a point. They converge at a point called the renal papilla. A renal papilla, such that the collecting tubules plus the renal papilla constitute a renal pyramid, loosely shaped like a triangle. So that point of convergence is the renal papilla. The white is the collecting, are the collecting tubules of the medulla. And together, the collecting tubules plus the renal papilla constitute a renal pyramid. In the cat, there's only one renal pyramid, but if you look at a frontal section of a human kidney, there will be many such uh, renal pyramids. And so urine flows into the collecting tubules to the renal papilla and then finally will be collected by the renal pelvis of the ureter. And then from the renal pelvis, urine flows into the u ureter proper and then into the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder for storage and then uh, once the cat needs to pee, then it will flow through the urethra and then finally into the urogenital sinus. Now let's examine the reproductive system. Okay, the reproductive system and the urinary system are often anatomically tied to each other and actually they, they share a common developmental origin from the mesomere layer of the mesoderm if you remember right? and that's why we typically study them together in the urogenital system the main organ of the female reproductive system would be the pair would be a pair of ovaries located on the uh, posterior dorsal wall of the abdominal cavity so here just near the kidneys actually 
So this one is the left ovary that not shape and not sized organ there. That's an ovary. And another ovary is here, undissected. This one. The right ovary. Okay, and uh, that's the gonad of the female cat, of the female mammal, the ovaries, and whose main job is to produce egg cells, the oocytes, which contain half of the would-be genome of the offspring. The other one would be contained in the sperm cell that will fertilize it. And so once an egg cell has become mature, matured inside the ovary, it will be collected by an oviduct. And the oviduct of a female mammal has different segments from proximal to distal. The most proximal one, the one that actually uh, catches the ovulated egg cell is the uterine duct, also called as the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube. So this one, this duct that kind of like forms a question mark and has an expanded funnel shaped portion there. So that's the fallopian tube. And then from the fallopian tube, hopefully, ma uh, fertilize, right? And then if the egg cell has been fertilized by a sperm, then that embryo, the zygote, will implant here in the uterus. So in the cat, unlike in, in primates, the uterus is partitioned, is split into two horns. So there's the left uterine horn, and there's a right uterine horn. And this kind of uterus anatomy is called the barpytite bipartite uterus and then aside from the uterine horns there's a body of the uterus but it's actually in the uterine horns where the embryos implant and where they are gestated actually this cat was pregnant you see those bulges dark bulges those were uh, embryos implanted in the uterine horns okay and then this is the body of the uterus and then more distally distal to the body of the uterus would be the vagina and the vagina continues down there in the pelvic cavity and eventually will converge will combine with this structure guess it this is connected to the urinary bladder so this is the urethra and so the the vagina there dorsally will fuse with the urethra to form a common duct the urogenital sinus okay, you see that they fuse somewhere here so that point of fusion will now create the urogenital sinus and then will exit via Here's a probe via the urogenital opening here. So in the case of the cat, unlike in humans, there's a, set, there's a common exit for the, for the urinary and the genital or reproductive system. But here's the, the distal most segment of the digestive tract which we postponed identifying during the digestive system uh, dissection because it's located deep down here in the pelvic cavity so remember this is the colon and then the colon the large intestine continues in the pelvic cavity as the rectum so on the back side of the urogenital system is the rectum and it has a separate opening via the anus More anteriorly is the urogenital sinus, 
and more dorsally or dorso posteriorly is the anus connected to the connected to the rectum this one the urogenital sinus here okay and then yeah you can see here that in between the vagina and the urethra there's a pouch like a pocket there formed or bounded by the lateral umbilical ligaments lateral umbilical ligaments in that pocket there between the urethra and uh, the vagina is called the vesicle vesicle uterine pouch all right let's go to the mesenteries that suspend the reproductive tract of a female mammal there's a mesentery suspending the ovaries and that's called the mesovarium the mesentery suspending the fallopian tube is the mesosalpinx and the mesentery suspending the uterine horns is the mesometrium and together the mesovarium the mesosalpinx and the mesometrium form the broad ligament the broad ligament and there's a ligament or mesentery perpendicular to the broad ligament this one this is the round ligament round ligament that completes the examination of the mammalian female to be specific urogenital system